We've examined putting images, say, on the internet or, say, into a PowerPoint presentation, and I dare say there might actually be more of you out there interested in doing it good for PowerPoint than the web, or maybe a PDF document, whatever. What about printing? What about getting out there with some nice high-resolution images and getting that good print? Let's do this. Let's open up here. I want the original. You say, well, how can you tell which one's the original? They both look about the same. Well, that right there tells me that's an edited one. But of course, if I click on it, it gives me the name over here and the size. And if I click on this one, you can see we're back to the 69 megabyte file. That's the one we want for print. Right click and open. When we're printing, number one, we do need to look at print size. Let's go to the word image and go down to resize image size. I'm not worried about these numbers. I'm worried about these numbers down here for document size. This is where in many cases I'm going to turn off resample the image. Understand that when I'm downsampling an image for the internet, it's required. I've got to do that. But when I'm working on an image for print, or actually this is my negative, any changes made to any of these numbers up here will reflect in the quality of the image because you're either going to add pixels or take pixels away. Well, for example, if I change that number to 300, the image was 69 megabytes and now it's 109. You say, well, it's bigger, there's more pixels in it, I agree. But that's upsampling. And those pixels aren't really good information, they're just more bricks in the wall. Let's go ahead and do this. Hold down the Alt key, that's the Option key on a Mac, and click Reset. Any of the dialog boxes, almost all of them, if you really change things and just really want to go back to the beginning, you don't have to cancel and then go back up to image and go down into resize image size. All you really have to do is hold down the Alt key, again, Option on a Mac, and just click there. And it'll reset back to what it was when you first opened it. Now we need to turn off resample the image. We need to work with the width and the height and the resolution. I don't want a 17 by 11. I'm looking for something more along the lines of an 8 by 10, you know, something like that. And so if 10's my long for width, I change that number. Watch everything change because we got that off. Well, we can get a 10 by 6.6. .6. If we change that number to 11, we're getting closer. If we change it to 12, we get about a 12 by 8. Notice our resolution is up to 357. What we're doing is we're taking the pixels that used to be in a 17 inch wide area and we're squeezing that original information into a real optically higher resolution. I would usually, in fact, I would almost always recommend that if your goal is to change this image print size wise, you should turn that off and play with this like a calculator. Now that number doesn't bother me. It doesn't have to be anywhere near that high. We could actually change that, but you don't have to. Leave it alone. It'll be fine. If at this point, though, you want to do that, turn now on resample. Change this to bicubic sharper because we are reducing. And change that number to 300. Now you are changing the number of pixels in the image, but now that you've got it to the size you want it, that's probably okay to do. Typically I don't, but since we're working with Organizer and since we're taking a version of this, we're not really ruining our original, why not? Click OK. Now at this point, of course, the question is what do we do with it from this point forward? If you're planning on printing it right now, you can go right to print. But let's save it. Let's talk about saving. Go up to the word file on the pull down menu, go down to save as. When we talked about doing things for the internet, we talked about the formats we might or might not use. There are two basic ones that we could use here that will work quite well. One is Photoshop and the other one is TIFF. Now the Photoshop format, the PSD format, is native to Adobe Photoshop Elements Editor. Well, just like Photoshop's format is PSD. It's the native format. If you are planning on going out to any product that's in the Adobe line, like, well, Andy, I'm going to open this up in InDesign, and I'm going to use that as my output because I'm doing a brochure, well, leave it as a Photoshop document. If you think you might go into something else, like uh, another program, another operating system, definitely maybe a different application, then I might want to suggest you the TIFF format. Now let's look at the TIFF format if we click Save. Now we do have options. One is compression. LZW is lossless. Now we can't JPEG this one because it's 16-bit, but if it wasn't 16-bit, if it was 8, we could, and we know about JPEGing. 
JPEGing is destructive compression. LCW is all right and ZIP is all right. They're both lossless. But there is one thing you might want to consider here. If you're going to give this file to somebody else, do they have the apps on the other side to uncompress it and open it? Now, if they have Photoshop Elements, the answer is yes. But if they don't, it is possible. They may have a compressed image they can't reopen again. So in most cases, if I'm giving it to somebody else, I am probably going to say none there. The pixel order is best left at interleaved, although I've found as the years have gone on, there is not really that big of a difference between them uh, in terms of how we use them or how we process them. But I would say interleaved is best. Byte order, leave it at IBM, even though I'm working on a Mac. Macintoshes take the IBM byte order no problem whatsoever, but I have noticed a few programs on the other side, on the Windows side, older programs, have trouble if you leave it byte order Macintosh. So I'd say leave that one on. Save Image Pyramid allows you to save the image in multiple resolutions, but there's not a lot of programs out there that can open that in terms of giving you those multiple resolutions. In most cases, you probably don't need that one. We have no transparency in this one, do we? But if we did, that would be available. And if you want to see it when you open it in something else, you better turn that on. And if we had multiple layers, it would ask us how we want to compress them. I would suggest probably the RLE would be the best one to use there. So we click OK. We now have a saved file. Let's go ahead and close this one. And there it is. Now we have three of them. Tell you what, let's collapse that down. On to the next.